Good morning, everyone. All right, am I on? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, these things, you get a little bit of an echo with these things. So it's very, very good to see each and every one of you who are here in the congregation. And hello to everybody at home. Welcome to worship on this sixth Sunday of Easter here at First Presbyterian Church, Plano, Texas. Um, as I say all the time, it's an honor and a pleasure um, to be able to be together to worship this way and through this technology. Um, got, it's time for announcements. It's announcement time. First of all, I want to give a shout out and a thank you to our volunteers who participated in our Love Where You Live Community Improvement Day yesterday. Um, we did some digging in the dirt and we did some raking and, and cleaned out some gutters and and painting numbers and things like that. And we were done by like 1230. It was, it was kind of cool. So, um, and for those of you who prayed for us, thank you. For those of you who, who donated um, and some of some supplies or some money, thank you. It was, it was a great success and look forward to next time. Absolutely. Uh, there is a new request that has come out um, this week, and that is we w are doing an underwear and socks drive for our friends at um, the street side clothing ministries. Um, and because the people who usually provide that is the group with street side showers. But they're running low, and so we are asking our friends here, the congregation friends here at home. Um, I've also sent that request out to some of my pastoral colleagues um, at, at the, the Plano area Presbyterian churches, so hoping that maybe we can all together celebrate, and I mean, excuse me, that we can all together support our, our neighbors, um, our street side shower. Uh, yeah, I celebrate too. Um, also wanted to remind y'all that not this week, but next I'll be out on a study week. Um, I'm going to be going to be virtually going to the Festival of Homiletics, which is um, a fancy name for preaching. And um, I'm looking forward to that. And I will be here to preach on, on Pentecost, which reminds me, Pentecost Sunday, um, it's been our tradition. And so I invite and remind y'all again, wear red on Pentecost Sunday, which is May 23rd. And um, so we, you know, that, it's that one day that we get to show off our red in the Christian, in the, in the, in the liturgical calendar. Um, so let's make sure that we do that. And um, also wanted to remind you that I will be out for the Sunday of, of uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, and on Memorial Day, our church office will be closed. At the same time, that Sunday, May 30th, is um, Unity Table Sunday, and I will be on that because um, that's, a, that's a commitment that I made um, a while back, and I need to honor that. Um, and so the Unity Table is, is an important opportunity that I'd like to invite all of you to. It is, um, it's an intentional conversation with people who are different from us, um, different racial, ethnic, um, cultural backgrounds than us. And um, we do this through Zoom. And it is, um, it's a time to be able to be honest and talk about um, talk about our assumptions, talk about our fears, talk about our hopes, and working together for racial reconciliation and equity. And um, that is my last of the announcements. Does anybody have anything that they need to add? Say it again. It's Mary Ann's birthday. Oh my goodness, everybody. Let's say happy birthday to Miss Mary Ann. <laughs> uh, do, do you want to, you want to, okay, thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mary Ann. Happy birthday to you. And many, 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 many more. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, I wanted to also um, 
Oh, shoot. Wait, I have one more thing in my head that, to remind y'all, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I know what it was. We got news from the committee, commi COM, uh, Committee on Ministry from Presbytery. Um, the, our second edit for our... Um, our mission study report has been approved, and so we are officially given the green light to be able to begin putting together a PNC, a pastor nominating committee. So yeah, that is very, very, very good news. And um, the mission study task force is rejoicing um, quite much. <laughs> We're very glad to have that. Um, so I told y'all that I would keep you updated. And so now I know that the, the nominating committee, they're all together. And um, so if you could please start praying for who God will be calling to serve on our pastor nominating committee. And um, Sarah Jo Miller, who is our COM liaison, will be working with our pastor nominating committee. Um, and I'll keep doing the, the, my transition work and also leading and guiding session as well. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we are here because God calls us. We are here because it is our joy to be able to give our praise and our worship to the one who loves us, to the one who creates us. And we are here in worship. And we remember that Christ is the one who called us. Christ is with us. And so friends at home, I invite you to grab your lighter and to come near and find your Christ candle as we light our Christ candle together, signifying the light of Christ within us, the, Christ, the light of Christ around us, the light of Christ before us, the light of Christ between us, and remembering Jesus as the light of the world who overcomes every single darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, beloved of God, welcome to worship and prepare your hearts and your souls for worship during our prelude. and in the congregation, please rise in body or spirit and join in the call to worship. After he rose from the dead and before he ascended into heaven, Jesus commanded the apostles to be his witnesses in Jerusalem and all, all Judea, Judea and Samaria and, Samaria, and, and to, to the, the ends of the earth. earth. Through a series of visions, the Holy Spirit brought a new and radical revelation a revelation for Jesus' followers of Jewish descent and Roman heritage alike. That, that God shows no partiality and embraces everyone and withholds baptism from no one. We may, like the burgeoning church, be figuring out how to proceed in unprecedented time. But what God desires of God's people remains the same from generations past. A right, a right relationship, relationship with God. God Honesty, honesty within, within ourselves, ourselves and, and loving everyone as we, as we love God, God and, and ourselves. Beloved of the one true God, let us rejoice and worship today for God's mercy is for all. We come to, to worship, worship and proclaim, proclaim again in this Easter season, Christ, Christ is risen, 
The Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Let us pray. Indeed, holy God, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. And we pray that you would help us to be Easter people and to be proclaiming that not only with our lips, also with the way that we live our lives as resurrection people every day. You have brought us here to worship God of abundance. And we pray, as you have already made this sacred space and sacred time by your presence, that we would feel you, that we would come to know you better, that our relationship with you would deepen, that our faith would strengthen through this time by your power. And we glorify you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you are worshiping today, please stand in body or spirit and join in singing our opening hymn, God of Wonders, which is on your insert. Folks at home, the lyrics will be on your screen.
may be seated. What a blessing it is to be able to be in the presence of the Lord of heaven and earth. And, and truly, as we walk outside and we look at nature, we can see God's majesty. And, and even in the destructive parts of nature, we can, we can see God's power. And it is so easy for us to be reminded when we, when we think about God's majesty and power that we are not God and so far from it and might even be afraid of God's majesty and holiness whenever we fail. God is additionally close and loving. Uh, and the Bible talks about chesed, God's eternal loving kindness. So God is all of this together and we can come and we are invited to come back and return to God whenever we have stepped away from, from the path. And so today our prayer of confession is um, in song and also we'll be praying together. So uh, friends at home, the words will be on your screen and friends of the congregation, how we're gonna do this is in, um, is in the bulletin. So I'll have a little bit of time that I'll actually pray and then we will sing together, and Kurt's going to lead us on his guitar, Humble Thyself in the Sight of the Lord, which is on the back side of your blue insert. This is number 2131. Um, and then I'll pray a little bit, then we'll sing again, and then we'll have a con congregational prayer and also some time of confession. Um, Kurt, could you help us with how we're going to sing this song? Um, so the easiest way to handle this would be one half of the congregation takes the top line and one half of the congregation takes the bottom line. So um, if you will sing the top line with the congregation when that time comes, and okay. then I can sing the bottom line. There so, you go. Yeah. Okay, so everybody time. who's on this side, follow me. And everybody <laughs> who's on Kurt's side, follow Kurt. Let us pray. Listening, watchful God, help us to be honest. Oh, but we are, we say. We're not at all like those who can't be trusted with money, the shifty and the feckless. We're good stewards and faithful servants. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. 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 Help us to be honest. Oh, but we are, we say. We are nothing like the fat cats, the greedy few, the haves who care nothing for the have nots. We're eloquent in the language of sharing, and we are not like those who like to look good and deceive even themselves, who talk the talk. But. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. 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 And he shall lift, shall lift you up higher and higher. And he, and he shall, lift shall, lift you shall lift you up. Let us pray together. Loving God. Help us to be honest that sometimes our getting it right gets in your way. Help us to be honest about our failings, how far we still have to go. Help us to pray without words, with tears instead, and help, help us, us honestly, honestly to love justice, justice to, to seek mercy, and, and to, to walk, walk humbly, humbly in your way. way. In, In Jesus' name, name we, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. And now we'll take a time of personal contemplative confession.
Amen. And friends, hear these words of assurance. And what we sang in the song is true. When we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord by confessing our sins and being honest with ourselves, being honest with God, being honest with the people that we have hurt and sinned against, when we do these things, God does lift us up. And we remain God's children no matter what we do. And that is the truth that we were told in our baptism that remains true at all times. You have humbled yourself. And even now, God lifts you up by the chin saying, my child, my child, my beloved, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please offer one another a sign of COVID friendly Christ peace. <laughs> <laughs> peace. May be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word, and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading is Galatians 1, 13 through 17, and 2, 11 through 21. As scripture tells us, the early church struggled with developing a new theology and new ways of living out faith. In times of conflict and peace, the spirit is present. May we sense the spirit as we listen to and learn from God's words yet again. <clears throat> you know what I was like when I followed the Jewish religion, how I violently persecuted God's church. I did my best to destroy it. I was far ahead of my fellow Jews in my zeal for the traditions of my ancestors. But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then it pleased him to reveal his son to me so that I would proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. When this happened, I did not rush out to consult with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to consult with those who were apostles before I was. Instead, I went away into Arabia and later I returned to the city of Damascus. But when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face, for what he did was very wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile believers, who were not circumcised. But afterwards, when some friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish believers followed Peter's hypocrisy and even... Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy, hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to Peter in front of all the others, since you, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you now trying to make these Gentiles follow the Jewish traditions? 
You and I are Jews by birth, not sinners like the Gentiles. Yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Jesus Christ Jesus so that we may be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. For no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. But suppose we seek to be made right with God through faith in Christ, and then we are found guilty because we have abandoned the law. Would that mean Christ has led us to sin? Absolutely not. Rather, I am a sinner if I rebuild the old system of law I already tore down. For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all of its requirements so that I might live for God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless, for if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Our second scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Listen for the good news. Then Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not like the other people. Cheaters, sinners, adulterers, I'm certainly not like that tax, collect tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give you a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, David. Oops. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, wind, fire, creative power of God, the one through whom the prophets spoke, the advocate that Jesus sent upon us, the one whom Jesus breathed upon his disciples, the one that the early apostles received by your power, Holy Spirit, thank you. We thank you that you brought us here, that you have already inspired the reading of Scripture, and now that you would open our hearts and our minds to, as it is preached, Lord, protect your pulpit. May all the words that come out of my mouth be only what you desire to be heard and preached. And may the words and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you, O oh Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to Galatians on our journey of following the burgeoning early church, of doing the next right thing. And often as I read the beginning of Galatians, I imagine Paul like this. Within Galatians, he does not do his typical greetings, grace and peace, Paul, blah, blah, blah. He gets right into, he just starts slinging the hammer. Because in his mind, things have gone terribly wrong. 
So this might be a little bit of a hard hitting kind of a sermon because I got to tell y'all the, the, the scripture that we're reading today is kind of hard hitting. And, and Jesus himself um, in, our, in our Luke text for today really didn't mince any words as he was comparing the two men. And we have some similarities between the two men in our Luke text and some two groups that are on our Galatians text. Hang out with me. So this is what's happening in Galatians that's making Paul go like this. He had preached to this church. He had planted this church. And then after he left, some people came back through preaching that you, in order to be part of the Christian community, you had to be circumcised and you had to follow the law, the, the law of Moses. And he comes back. It's like, oh, my goodness, you're following the wrong gospel. Another thing that has happened between now and then is Peter himself. Oh, Peter. We did this last week, did we not? Oh, Peter. Peter, I really think he, as I said last week, he really is such a representation of all of humanity. He just is. He's so wonderful sometimes, and you're like, wow, and sometimes you're like, oh, cringe, that was just bad. And today I see within Peter not just what happens within us as individuals, but very much what is happening within the church today and has been happening for many years, maybe even centuries. So Paul comes and he, and he sees that for a while that Peter, because he understands and knows because he's seen the Holy Spirit at work, has been eating with Gentiles, which as we have established is like way wrong from the Jewish heritage point of view that he was raised because first of all he's hanging out with people who are unclean you're not even supposed to be with the gentiles much less be at the same tables you know sharing time together and then even more he's been eating with the gentiles and the reason why this is bad is not only possibly could something that's not kosher be served you know, maybe there's some shrimp or something on the table. But also there is always the possibility that there is food that has been sacrificed to idols. That is being, that is being served at the table. So not only are Jewish people not supposed to hang out with or sit at the table of, of Gentiles, but they're not supposed to eat that same food for that exact reason. But Peter, in his way of, of believing and knowing that the this church, this new religion, this way of Jesus Christ is for everyone and all are the same. As Paul says later in Galatians, that all are one in Jesus Christ. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. There is no longer Jew or Greek, that we are all one in Christ Jesus, that these things have been broken down. And so Peter was eating with the Gentiles. And then when some of these people from the Jerusalem church came through Galatia and started preaching the, you know, the, the circumcision mosaic law part of Christianity, well, as it says in our, in our Galatians text for today, Peter separated himself. He separated himself. Wait, what did I do with my notes? Sorry, y'all. Ah, here they are. Quote, Peter drew back and kept himself separate for fear, for fear of the circumcision faction. And so Paul is getting on to him. Paul is swinging the hammer, and he's getting on to Peter about his inconsistency. What is it? And also, he's getting on to Peter about how this inconsistency might affect others, you know, and they are all equally new in this faith. And whenever you're new at something, you need lots of guidance, and you look towards your leaders and your teachers and your elders a little bit more than you might when you're a little bit more mature and experienced. And so Peter is, you know, like it says in the text for today, okay, you were born Jewish and we were raised Jewish. And so why are you trying to make the Gentiles live the way that we know that we can't? This makes absolutely no sense. What I see in Peter is a man in new 
territory in unprecedented times where he doesn't quite know what to do. And so he's doing his best to take a breath, take a step, take the next step, and try to do the next right thing. It's really hard to erase things that you have been raised with and have been told to you all throughout your life. This is true, this is true, this is true. And even, even more firm, this is the law. And now, the Messiah of God and the Holy Spirit are saying, this is something new. You don't just throw away everything that you've been experienced at the drop of a hat. So I see Peter struggling because he was raised and he was told in a certain way of this is how you honor and glorify God. You stay pure. And this is how you tell God how much you love God. By following the law as best you can and you stay pure. And then he's had these experiences of the Holy Spirit pouring the Spirit self upon the Gentiles, these people who, as Paul says in our reading for today, he called them sinners, simply just not Jewish people. He, you know, called them sinners, and, um, and they eat potentially food that was given to idols, and, and another potential is food that's not kosher. And, and so... Peter is wanting to express and live into this new inclusion, this new radical love, this new radical inclusion within Peter himself is a man that is within conflict, is a man that is experiencing complexity of how to be a person of faith, how to be a person who loves God and shows love to God by living for God, by following God's law, doing his best not to break it, and doing his best to follow this revolutionary and rule-breaking, law-breaking, some people say, path of the Holy Spirit, of including and welcoming and widening the grasp of God. Now, it's important for us to always, always, always remember is what Jesus said about himself. I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill. Let me say that again. We need to always remember what Jesus said about himself. Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill. So this idea of following Jesus in this new way means dumping the law. Or somehow, because we don't have to have a circumcision or follow the law of Moses, that somehow we are not being law abiding or following God's laws. That is not what it means at all. Jesus within himself both is the fulfillment of and the of, of the law and the expansion of the family of God. They're together within Jesus himself. And now within the way that the church is growing, they're together within the church. And they're having a hard time figuring out how to do it. See, the early church friends, just like us today and a decade ago and a decade ago and a century ago and, and probably throughout the history of the church, Shows the church experiencing very much what the church has been experiencing, which is two factions, if you will, trying and struggling how to best express and live the faith. One faction, if you will, one group is concerned with and displaying their loyalty to God through purity and devotion by holding to that law, by holding to those traditions, what we've, already, what we've always known, you know, stay pure, 
and stay within. This is a way of honoring and glorifying God. And then we have another faction, you know, maybe part of the newer group, if you will, that is trying to live this same way to honor God through hospitality, inclusiveness, and welcome. And you see, the thing that much like Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill. And Jesus says, you will be my witnesses in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Within Jesus is both. Both of these groups, the purity folks and the hospitality welcome expansion folks, both of these groups have good hearts and the best of intentions to honor and glorify God and to serve God's people. We sang in our, our opening hymn today that the heavens are God's tabernacle. Another word for tabernacle is tent. And you might have heard a phrase within Christianity about God's big tent. Within this tabernacle, within this tent, is room enough for every one. And that comes in big ways, and it comes in small ways. It comes in social ways. It comes in private ways. It comes in ways that affect the laws of our country. It comes in ways that affect the way that we run our homes. I've invited a dear friend of mine his name is Clark Carradine, to come and share an experience of a big tent that he experienced recently. And um, I have asked Session for permission for him to come share during our sermon time, and, and they said yes. Clark is an ordained elder, ruling elder within the PCUSA. He is a member of Grace Presbyterian Church and an active member of the Pres North Texas Presbyterian pilgrimage community. And so I would like all of you to welcome Clark as he shares his big tent experience. Clark, go ahead and go to the lectern because that's the only one where we have a mic. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And now, now, we're playing, now we're playing Presbyterian bingo up here. Oh, I <laughs> So thank you. Um, I, I appreciate the privilege and honor that you all have extended to me here. Uh, and, and, I, and you're right, I've, I've known Angie for a few years now. And I hadn't seen her in a while because I'd been out of town. And we just had lunch last Tuesday. Uh, and we got to talking. And I told her this story. And she said, you need to come to church Sunday. <laughs> just another example of God putting the right person in the right place at the right time. So two weeks ago, I had badgered, pestered um, um, Kim into letting me be a part of Presbytery's worship team that was going to go down to the Dallas Convention Center and, and do the worship for all the immigrant kids that are being held at the convention center. Um, I don't speak Spanish, but it didn't really matter. I, ma I managed to convince her that I needed to be part of the team. And so I found myself with a group of 20 people, all of whom spoke Spanish except me. <laughs> and we went down to the convention center to do worship. Um, they found a job for me. We had prayer cards. And I had a whole bag of prayer cards and a bag of crayons. And my job was to go out into the, into the hall and pass these cards out. Now, it was not what I imagined. It was a lot bigger than what I imagined. It was a huge room filled with cots and filled with children of God between the ages of 12 and 17. 
and they were all eager to get a card and a crayon, and they were filling these out. Now, in some ways, I'm not very smart, but I do know when I'm in the presence of God, and I do know when I'm in a worship service, and that was the most amazing worship service that I didn't understand a word of, all right? <laughs> didn't have a clue. Um, the worship leaders had prepared five songs. Uh, they sang those five songs three times because the kids just did not want to let them go. So I collected a bunch of cards for people to pray for. And what I have figured out, two things. One is if you take a picture of the card and upload it to Google Translate, Google Translate will do a fantastic job and tell you what's on the card so you can pray. The more important thing I figured out is it doesn't matter that I don't know what's on this card because God knows what's on this card. And so I passed out a bunch of these cards at, at, at Grace last week and I'm going to stand out, out in the narthex here and, and I'll pass out a bunch to you too so that you can join me in praying for these children. Um, this one here I, I says, he praying for mi madre, mis tios, mi padre, mis tias, and, and two others that I can't, I don't know, but that's his mother, his father, his aunts, and his uncles. Just like any other child would ask for prayers. You know, God put me there for a reason, but I also know that God put each one of those children there for a reason. It's not my job to figure out what that reason is. It's my job to pray for them, and I ask for y'all's help in joining me to pray for them. Thank you. One thing that Clark pointed out as we were talking is that there were people within the, own, the, the same congregation of Grace Presbyterian Church who didn't think that those kids should even be there because they broke the law. They broke the law by coming into this country. And then also some folks within his congregation that are talking about the theology of hospitality and welcome and inclusiveness. Does that sound familiar? Do we honor God by following the law? Or do we honor God by welcoming and being inclusive. I think we are all like Peter. We are all, pe we are all people who are struggling and are conflicted within ourselves and we are doing the best that we can to do the next right thing, to figure out how to be faithful. And it's important that we remember who Jesus is, the one who came to fulfill the law and not abolish it, and, and one who includes everyone. And that we don't treat one another like the Pharisee in our Luke passage for today. He says, man, I'm really glad that I'm not like that person. Because I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm not like other people. I'm not a cheater. I'm not a sinner. I'm not an adulterer. And I'm certainly not like that one. See, exactly when we do that, that's when we're sinning against another 
child of God, another image bearer. And we're hurting the heart of the one who created us and who created that one that we're being so self-righteous about. And we're hurting them as well. I love this quote from James Finley. He is on faculty at the Center for Cont Con Contemplation and Action that is located in Santa Fe, New Mexico. He is well known um, as a modern day Christian mystic. And he studied under Thomas Merton when Thomas Merton was still alive. And that's a big name within Christian American Christian mysticism too. And James Finley says this, if we are absolutely grounded in the absolute love of God that protects us from nothing, even as it sustains us in all things, then we can face all things with courage and tenderness and touch the hurting places in others and in ourselves with love. See, the reason why we get legalistic sometimes is we're trying to have control and we're trying to be protected from some type of outcome that we're afraid of. And we need to stay grounded in the absolute love of God that protects us from nothing, but sustains us in all things. And when we do this, we can face all things with courage and tenderness and touch the hurting places in others and in ourselves with love. So we learned that the church has been struggling with this for centuries. Are we pure? Or are we inclusive? And I'm just going to tell you right now, I reject the, the dichotomy. I reject the dualism. Because of who Jesus is. Within himself, he is the fulfillment of the law and the inclusion of all. So I don't have an answer for us, friends, of how to be the church with these, with these two factions that remind, remain just as strong today. I'm just going to keep my eye on Jesus. And like my friend Clark says, this is a really big tent. And I don't have the answers. And maybe I don't understand the language that people are speaking in. But I know I can love. And I know I can pray. In the holy name of the one who was, who is, and who is yet to come. Amen. Everyone at home and here in the congregation, please stand in body or spirit and affirm our faith with this affirmation inspired by 1 Corinthians 12. You'll note that the speaking parts are divided. First I speak, then the right side of the congregation, and then the left side, and then everyone. The pattern is the same for all four stanzas. Folks at home, speak whatever parts you wish. The body is a unit made up of many parts. Are all prophets? Together, Together we, we are, are the body of Christ. of Christ. We are baptized by one spirit and given one spirit to drink. Are any healers? Do any speak in tongues? Do, do all work miracles? Together, Together we, we are, are the, the body, body of Christ. Christ. If one part suffers, all suffer with it. When one part is honored, all are honored with it. Are all apostles? Do any interpret? Together, together we, we are, are the, the body, body of Christ. Christ. God has bound us together as the church so that we might share the good news to all that God's realm is at hand. Are any leaders? Do all teach. Together, together we, we are, are the, the body, body of Christ. Christ. Some, Some gathered here in love to worship the one who brings us life. 
some living in our community, and many all throughout God's world. Amen. You may be seated. We have two of our dear friends who are in the hospital right now, um, so we need to add to our prayer list. First is Alice Nass. She's in the hospital with pneumonia and with blood clots um, in her lungs and in her legs, and um, she has a pretty high fever. And uh, Bob has asked no visitors at, at the hospital. He is accepting phone calls at home, and if you would like to send uh, cards to Alice, I recommend that you send it to their home address because uh, Bob is doing a really good job at, at going back and forth, not surprisingly. And then also Edie Houts is in the hospital. Um, there was an infection around um, her port. And I talked to Lou yesterday and um, he said that she's doing better. The infection is, is getting better. And um, she is in Medical City Hospital in Plano. That's also where Alice is. And um, Lou is open to visitors. We just have to coordinate it because there can only be two people in there at a time. Um, so make sure that you connect with Lou and their numbers are in the church directory. And if you don't have a directory and you would like to call or get the address, um, y'all can call the church tomorrow. Uh, you can also email Sherry at office at firstplano.org. Uh, does anybody have any, um, joys, other concerns to add to our list this morning? Happy Mother's Day. Oh, Yes. Um, I was gonna, that's part of my, that's part of my prayer. Uh, Mother's Day is, 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 um, is complex. For many, it's a joyful day. Uh, and for many, it's, it's also a painful day or a confusing day. For some who have lost mothers, it's, it's, it's a little bit of both. For some who were never able to become mothers, um, it's a little bit painful. Um, and motherhood is a, a gift from God and um, some were hurt by their mothers. So this is a day where, um, where we do the thing where we embrace it all and we have a big tent. So for those who are celebratory, absolutely happy Mother's Day. And for those who are hurting, I see you and I'm here to pray and listen if you're on that side as well. Yes, Ted. Praise God. Is this Byron? Yeah. Yay. Praise God. Our friend Byron got a job. Yay. That's awesome. That's a definite praise. Other prayers of uh, praise concern? Okay. And also, um, now that we're talking about prayer, I want to make sure that y'all see it's in the bulletin and it was also in our newsletter that starting next Sunday, the 16th, our weekly prayer gathering, Zoom prayer gathering is going to move to Sundays at 3 p.m. Sundays at 3 p.m. We're hoping that maybe more people will be able to join us since it's not in the middle of a, of a work day. Um, so Sunday at 3 p.m. and we will make that Zoom information available to everyone. All right, let us pray. Loving and holy God, we are grateful to you. And you tell us in your word that whenever, whenever your children call upon your name, that you will come and hear and you will listen. And you will answer. We thank you, Lord, for this community, for this congregation, for your church here and in Plano and Texas throughout the world, the caring and the loving that go on in the midst of the struggle as we continue to try to figure out how to be a church together. Help us to focus on you, Lord, and to remember that your tent has shelter for all. And all are welcome into what you offer under it and within it. Lord God, we particularly lift up to you your daughters, Alice and Edie. We lift up to you, Bob and Lou, and all of the 
the doctors and nurses that are taking care of them. Pray that you would comfort the McCown family. Pray, Holy One, that you would continue to be with all who are on our prayer list. You know what their concerns are, Lord. And we give you thanks and praise. Thank you so much, Lord, for Byron's new job. And boy, was that a process. And I thank you, Lord, that you showed yourself and Byron saw you. We pray for our friends at Streetside Showers, the clients, the ones who do the ministry. We pray, Lord, that somehow those who are homeless would find a way and to shelter and, and jobs and health and mental health care that they need. And that at the very least right now that you would help us with the underwear and the sock drive and that more congregations would get involved. And Holy One, as we do every day, do our best to focus on Jesus, hear us as we honor him and say together the prayer that your, ta your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the book of Romans, Paul describes all of creation as groaning in childbirth right up to the present time. He continues by saying that we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. The same is true of the church, as it is constantly being birthed and shaped anew by the Spirit. Your tithes and offerings testify to your commitment to God's work in and through FPC Plano. With all of the inherent birthing pangs and glory, thanks be to God for your generosity. You are invited to leave your gift in the offering plate in the narthex as you exit the sanctuary after worship, give electronically via our online portal, or to mail your offering into the church. For those of you at home, the mailing address is displayed at the end of this video. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. Let us pray. Loving God, we bring the gifts of our wealth, our time, and our lives to your service. We offer them freely as a testimony to our gratitude for the mercy you have shown to us. Accept them and use us for the important work of your kingdom on earth. Amen. Amen. Please stand in body or spirit and join in singing our closing hymn, number 353, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, which is printed in your insert. Lyrics will be on your screen for our friends at home. His oath is covenant, his blood 
I want to remind y'all that Clark will be um, out uh, by the door as you enter the narthex um, with me today. He'll be giving out the prayer cards, and, and as he said, all you got to do is take a picture of the card with your with your phone, and you can um, and you can load that into Google Translate, just the picture, and it will help you with that. Now, if you're not tech techie and you, and you would like some help with that. Call the church and we can help you. Um, because if you want to participate in praying for these migrant boys, there are over 2,000 of them. And just to let y'all know, this service, this ministry has been ecumenical. It was started by the North Texas Catholic Diocese and um, the Presbyterian Church, the United Methodist Church, um, and um, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, as well as there's another Jewish community, and, and our PCUSA has been involved in this ministry to these migrant teens. Um, and they have been coming here to worship, I think, since May, or early May, or maybe it was even March. Um, and we're done with that now. So if, if you at home would like to participate and you would like a card um, and we can help you with translation, just let us know by sending an email to the office at office at firstplano.org. Um, and as we prepare, friends, to go out into our week Remember, the, you don't necessarily have to settle that conflict within you about how to live faith and how to, be honor, how to be honoring God and honoring God's people. Sometimes we can lean on Christ the solid rock and pray in love and, and let God do the rest because the tent indeed is for all. I invite you to our commission and blessing, friends. If you're standing here, it's in the bulletin. Friends, the words will be on your screen, those who are at home. And um, you can follow Kurt. Wherever there is worship of God in whatever language, whether wanderer or roots planted. We pray for the body of Christ, the world, and all those in need. Lord, lead us in lives of integrity that reflect our commitment to you and your gospel. May we see your light in the undwelling of your spirit within neighbor and migrant alike. Help us to outwardly show the Christ that lives inwardly within us. Fill us with your love so that we might be your conduit. When we can't figure out how to exist together, when it seems to us that the only option is to separate, when our tendency to judge, quote, the other group, unquote, as less faithful than ourselves and morally superior. Remind us, God of abundance, that for you there is no controversy. What you have made clean, we must not call profane. God's tabernacle is larger than any of us can imagine. Jesus' arms extend wider than we know. There is room for both devotion and loyalty, and inclusion and welcome. May the same be true in our hearts, minds, and souls. Indeed, may it be true every day. And as you go out and live this way, friends, receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and every day. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
。